then you owe me for the pattern. It's strict, 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 strict. And it Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Erica and you are at the Lopsided Crafter. Grab yourself something to drink, sit back for a spell, and let's talk about all of our yarny goodness and creativity. Good morning. Good morning everybody. Welcome to the Lopsided Crafter. It is Monday, November 8th, 7.06 a.m. And it is 36 degrees outside. It's cold. <laughs> um, as you can see, I am not in my she shed this morning. Come to the time of year where I'm going to be out there less frequently um, because of the heat situation. Um, I do have a heater out there, just not one that is um, consistent enough for now. We are working on that. So we're going to start with life. If you're not here for it and you don't care for it, skip ahead a few bits and here we go. So um, I normally do my filming on Saturday. Just haven't been feeling really well um, since about probably Thursday. Um, I was supposed to, Carrie and I were supposed to meet for lunch. Neither one of us were feeling it Thursday morning when we woke up. Um, our joints were just on fire. It was cold. It was like 32 degrees, something like that. Or high, or yeah, it might have been the high. I mean, it was crazy, and it was raining on top of that. Um, my, I wasn't so bad in the morning, but the more the day progressed, the worse I felt. So, I really wasn't feeling too good on Friday. Was a little bit better on Saturday, but not a hundred percent. And then Sundays are the days that um, I give myself my shot for. Yeah. Um, so they've got me on methotrexate and. It works for the week, but the day of the shot just <sighs> so when my husband said yesterday, "Hey, let's just hang out in the bedroom and watch TV all day," I'm like, "Okay," because <laughs> my husband never does that. My husband's always on the go, move, 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 move. So that's what we did. Other than I had to take my son out to my youngest son out so he could get his hair cut, but I was miserable doing that too, by the way. Oh well. Um, and then we're still going through some things that um, I haven't really said anything about it on social media, and I'm probably not going to. Um, but we're still going through some things that happened not this past weekend, but the weekend before. We're still dealing with that with um, um, the sheriff's department and all that stuff. So, um, anyway, let's talk about what I've been doing this week. Well... I'm going to start off with my crochet because I've only been doing two things. Um, I actually have came up with a new square. And I'm going to leave it here on this blocker. So this is my new granny square design. Um, 
I've actually got it in testing right now. This is the circle of another one that I have started. Um, I'm working on an Afghan design for this of like all different shapes and sizes and not necessarily all squares, but I'm kind of going for a retro Pink Floyd vibe for this afghan. So I've been working on that. And then I am working on another um, another one of my kind of sweater recipes where you're going to start with a certain amount based on your measurements. So, um, if you have my past sweater pattern um, that is in my Etsy shop, it's called the Alice Springs Tea. Um, then you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, and that was Kaboo Yarn, by the way, from Lion Brand. Lion Brand. Um, you kind of know what I'm talking about, where you make your, you do your measurements, and then you start your, um, your chain stitches based on your measurements. So it's going to be kind of the same way. So it's going to be, um, you can use any yarn, any hook, and it's all going to be based on you, your body size. So, yeah. Um, it is going to be a bottom up. <clears throat> and it's going to be um, a little bit of ease. So... You want it to be kind of boxy and comfortable. So I'm working on that. Um, that's all I've got for crochet. Um, I have not shown my journals. I keep kept meaning to show them, but they were always in the house. Um, if you watch my video sometime... It wasn't last week, but the week before I showed where um, I had bought some composition notebooks and um, some paper from Hobby Lobby and that I was going to make my own journals. Well, I did end up making two of them. The third one I think I'm going to convert into a... Um, Kind of like a health journal, if you will. So that way I can write down every day how I'm feeling, what I'm eating, that kind of thing. Because the doctor asked me that whenever I go back. And I'm like, I don't remember for the past three months, let alone yesterday. You know. So, anyway. Um, so the first one I decided to do as just like a um, project book. So it's got knit and crochet, and this is that um, paper. You know, like your scrapbook paper. And then this little tag, and then that little sticker that says, Love Grows Here. And then on the inside... I've got a little, I got more paper, and then there's a pocket right here. And then so far, right here, I've got um, the crochet conversion chart. I'm all the time having to look up the millimeters versus the letters on certain ones. So I decided I was going to put that in here. And then this is also, um, and I minimized it. 
this is from the Craft Yarn Council of America. This is the standard um, sizes for women based on um, the bust, the hips, the neck, all of the different measurements. So I um, shrunk that down and put it there. And then I've just got a few little stickers. Um, I have a lot of the Happy Planner stuff and I didn't want it to go to waste. So on this next page, I just cut one of the folders in half and put it in here. And then this is projects. Um, so far, I haven't... divided it between knitting and crochet as of yet. Um, I've just been writing down what it is. I think I'm going to do one project per page and that way I can put um, put a picture in here later. I'm also going to write down the link to the Ravelry page so I can always go back and check that as well. So that's the first one. And then this one is for the, um, I know it's kind of hard to see, it does have stickers on there, but it says knit and crochet design. Um, this one is specifically for my knitting and crochet designs. Um, the same thing, I shrunk down the standard sizes and put it in there. And just some little motivational stickers. Um, I've got a little check sheet over here that we can lift up, and then I've got some notes. It's in pink and green, and I did that for a reason. This is idea. Ideas for designs. Um, the pink, which you guys can't read it, but the pink is um, crochet, and the green is knitting, and then I do have this separated just by the middle of the book and I've got a few knit designs already going and I have a few crochet design notes in here as well so that's what I've got as far as that I've been meaning to show you guys that but it was always in the house. Excuse me. That medicine makes my mouth so dry. Okay. Um, so the next thing I've been working on. Well, actually, this is a. F.O. Sorta. Um, I was honored, ecstatic, and kind of fangirled <laughs> all at the same time. Um, I am a on the permanent testing list for Jody Brown. Um, if you do not know who that is, you may know her as Mrs. Brown's Bags on Instagram. And if you don't know her by that name, you may know her as half of the Grocery Girls. Yes. She put out a tester's call on Instagram for these adorable little hat vents. She calls it a hat vent. You know, like you have your advent calendar with yarn. This is a hat vent. And they were absolutely adorable. It was a very laid back testing. And I loved that. Um, I have found and I'm not sure why, but I have found that the knitting tests are like 
laid back and cool and you know we've got so many testers if you don't get it done all the way that's fine um, we're here to have fun and then on the crochet testing side it's no you've got to have it done by this time if you don't get it done and I don't care if it's two rows then you owe me for the pattern it's strict 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 and it makes it's it's not fun it's not fun at all and I don't get that um, so um, I I'm not sure um, so I have found like I said I brain issues um, that the knitting testing groups are just so much more laid back and relaxed which now I'm not saying that all the crochet testing groups are like this just the ones that I've been involved with um, when knitters call for a test they're like sure send me your email um, and you're in we don't care how many testers and see the idea behind that is and I don't understand why everybody doesn't do it this way but maybe it's a money thing for them I don't I don't know but um, the more testers you have the more advertisements you get because these people put it on Instagram and Ravelry and then when you put your patterns up on Ravelry you've already got a ton of projects under your um, your pattern and it goes up to the most popular status on Ravelry so I'm not sure why everybody doesn't do it that way maybe I have a bad taste in my mouth because recently and I won't say the designer but I had a bad experience with a crochet designer and that's unfortunate um, I applied for a test and was not chosen, which is fine. I reached out and said, hey, can you tell me why? Was it maybe that you had too many people sign up for that size? Or was it, what was it? Uh -oh. I might get through this. <laughs> Anyway, so I contacted the designer and their reply was, your level of crochet experience and expertise is not up to my standards. What I wanted to say was, mm, I have been crocheting longer than you've been alive. I replied with, oh, okay. It bothered me. It really, truly bothered me because I've been crocheting for 40 years and my level is not up to your standards really okay and it did it bothered me it really truly bothered me um, I let it get me down I really did
All that to say that same weekend that all this was going on, Jody from Mrs. Brown's Bags and half of the grocery girls, Tracy is her sister, <coughs> posted on her Instagram feed that she had a test call. I thought, ah, what the heck, I'll give it a try. I said, oh my gosh, those are gorgeous. I would be honored to be a part of your test knit within five minutes she messaged me and said send me your email so I am now in the testing pool for Jody which made my day week rest of the year um, and also I am going to be testing the new um, mystery knit along for the Cozy Up Knit Girls. So, I will know what you guys are working on before you do. <laughs> and that one's a secret, so I will not be able to show that one as I'm working on it because it's a mystery. <clears throat> I although can show you the hat bent. All that was leading up to, and I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole and a tangent. I'm sorry, but that's kind of, you know, people have been asking me why I haven't been crocheting much. And that's why. Um, it's kind of why. So, anyway, there are six patterns in this hat bent pattern. <clears throat> there are a bunch of testers, so we did not have to do all six of them. I did do four. Um, all of them is, all of them, all of the ones that I did are in the yarn that I have dyed personally, except for the hot pink. The hot pink color in these that I'm going to show you is roller derby of Arkansas Yarn Company. But this is the first little hat. This little cable. All of the yarn is held double. Um, so it's two fingering weights, which equals a DK. So you can do it in fingering weights. You can um, held double. You can do it in DK. You can even do these in worsted weight. They're just going to be a little bit bigger. Isn't that adorable? So these are just little hats that you can put a piece of uh, scrap yarn through and make a little garland, <clears throat> or you can put them on your um, fireplace, <coughs> excuse me, or you can put them, you know, on top of a gift as a little added fun piece, but here's one of them. Um, this is the second one, and again, um, this is the yarn that I dyed, and this is Lori's from Arkansas Yarn Company. This is the third one. Now, of course, these can be done in any color, um, not necessarily have to be done in Christmas colors. Here's the third one. So if you're seeing a theme here. Um, I decided not to do the shellography because it is just a, not my aesthetic. So the yarn that I dyed for that, <laughs> I'm using for this. And then this one is the third one, which I think is absolutely adorable. I'm not sure if it's going to be backwards on your screen, but it does say joy. It is so stinking cute. Like I said, these are four of them. They should be released sometime this week. There are two more that 
go with the set. So be sure to look out for that from Jody. That was a very exciting chest knit to be a part of. The next thing I'm working on is a muscle bird for my son. And I casted this on Saturday morning. And this, well, yeah, Saturday morning. Worked on it a little bit and then was able to work on it a little bit yesterday. Um, I put a progress keeper right here. When I stopped last night, when I started yesterday, I was right about here where the lines split. So when you, when I first cast it on, it was, you know, striping quite a bit. Now it's kind of pooling in this funky little design here. Um, if you haven't done a muscle bird before, the idea behind it is it's a big tube. You start with your small circumference, and I did the magic ring knit cast on. Um, I will tighten that up. It's kind of hard to see with the color of the yarn. And then you increase until your size. Um, the pattern the way that it's written you can use any yarn any size needles you just start casting on and then you get your gauge based on your amount of stitches and a certain um, diameter uh, diameter <laughs> and then from there you determine how many stitches you need per needle i did start with the dpns and now i have switch to the circulars um, you knit for so many inches and then you decrease so it becomes a double layered hat toboggan to whatever you want to call it since making this my oldest son has decided that he wants one as well this one is Arizona Cardinals colors. My oldest son wants one in Green Bay Packers colors, which I already so happen to have in the shed because I had bought the yarn for him previously. And then my youngest one wants one in Kansas City Chiefs colors. Okay. So, I've got three of these to make. And then my middle son says to me which he's sitting right over here on the on the um chair next to me so he might be looking at me kind of funny after i start talking about him but he says hey ma can you make me like two week two work weeks worth of socks that's 10 pairs <laughs> So he kind of works outside. He works in a facility that has a garage, but he's in and out of that garage quite often. Um, he has to wear steel toe boots. It's getting cold, so his feet need to be warm. So I will be knitting him some socks. The good news is I had him try on a pair of socks that I knitted for myself. Um, these right here I know I've showed you before. Just so I could kind of get an idea of what I needed to do for his foot. Because you know, well you may not know, but when you knit socks they need to be a negative ease because you want them to be able to stretch a little bit. If you knit them the size of your foot or larger, then they're not going to conform to your foot and they're not going to stay up on your leg. So you want to have a little bit of a negative ease. So, I have a short, wide foot and he has a little bit of a longer, narrow foot. But, 
my dimensions from toe to heel for my foot is exactly the same for his foot. I might add just a little bit more length on the foot itself so the heel fits him a little bit better. He did like this heel. This is the heel flap and gusset. Now, of course, he wants his longer because he does wear boots. So I won't be doing shorties for his. So I was looking at yarn last night on the computer trying to find, you know, masculine-ish colors because in the past, none of, none of my boys have wanted knitted socks. So I was like, well, you know, why buy yarn for them, you know? And now he wants some, and now my youngest son wants some, and heck, my oldest son's probably going to want some too now that I'm knitting them for everybody else. But my middle son says to me, Ma, I don't care if they're pink and purple striped. Nobody's going to see them. <laughs> so, so I've got, you know, a few balls of yarn out there um, that I'll probably make. Like, you know, the Halloween um, colors that I just got in the mail that I showed in the um, Hobie haul will probably go to him. I'm not sure exactly how much I will need because they are longer. I'm going to have to play around with the length to see which way he likes because, you know, I like to do mine toe up. So I'll make sure that I don't run out of yarn. We'll just have to play around to see what he likes, you know, if, if the toe's comfortable, if the heel's comfortable, the length, that kind of thing. So that's going to be an ongoing project here for the next several weeks. But, but that, my friends, is about all I've got. You know, it's kind of been sporadic and all over the place today, so... Until next time, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and happy looming. Bye. Thanks for joining us on The Lopsided Crafter. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. We really, truly appreciate it. Until next time, happy knitting, happy looming, and happy crocheting. Bye.